I've seen it like three times. Okay. It's kind of boring in spots, but it's... Got to admit, Paul Rogers, there's a reason why they call him the voice. Right? The guy The guy brings it. Yeah. There's just no question. Yeah. And he, uh, for a dude who's been around that long, he's like kind of still... He looks younger than he should look. Right? Well, he looks a lot younger than the other band members. Yeah. That's for sure. But they started, you know, you got to figure when they started, he was, when he was in Free, he was a kid when Free, when he started in Free. Right. Right? Those other guys look like, you know, just grandfatherly types. I mean, he's really yeah. sort of keeping his youth, it seems. Mm hmm Yeah. I remember when uh, Bad Company were coming through. They were playing a show at Lake Wobegon. It was uh, <laughs> exciting. I met... Uh, Mick Ralphs came by uh, he really wanted to try Mrs. Abernathy's peach pie he had heard so much about it. he had some of it when he played with Moth the Hoople when they came through on the uh, All the Young Dudes tour that's so we, an excellent mashup yeah why is Garrison Keillor so satisfying to me I don't know. I don't listen to the. I've listened to three episodes of that thing in my life. That's I'm gonna hang up on callers now. I'm just gonna turn this song up on them. What do you think about that, Mike? I'll turn that break up, like when it just kicks in. That's how callers get dismissed now on the show. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, I heard you talking about me. How are you doing? Like after he got frustrated, he'd go out to like one of the little kiosks that sell uh, cases. Jim Jim would have led the revolution. He would have he would have uh, stuck around and, and thought what was going on. Oh, I'm sure he would have. Who's this? Is that Zach from Minhamin? Yeah, Jim Morrison sure would have been a great uh, leader of the revolution. I mean, he, you know, he had he he dealt with some some heavy stuff, but uh, he, no, he, he didn't. He was all about you know freedom and uh, you know he, you know he actually had a chance to do that, yeah. to actually do it. Well, I mean, but it, it's hard, you know. The whole fame trip is like you you get on there and uh, you know and you get brought down, and there's a lot of influence and drugs and, and stuff like that. But yeah, he was uh, he he would have tried, you know, eventually. Mm -hmm. The whole fame trip. You're right. Man. It's, it's a bit, you know, it's tough. I, a lot of people have been submitted to it, you know, and then they, they just keep producing the same amount of uh, garbage or making it, more stuff that, that doesn't help other people. It's hard, man. It's tough. It, it robbed me, so, uh, I was born that guy's going to get it Six gun in What's that? Uh, uh huh. Behind a gun. They are both the same. And make right. my final stand. It's why they call me. Bad that might be the dumbest thing now on the show. That is my favorite thing that's ever happened. Is people when the bad, when the song "Bad Company" by Bad Company fades up. That's my equivalent of Sandman Sims sweeping people off the stage of the Apollo. John? Well, John, I hope you get better. Well, no, it's actually his dad. Oh, John's dad. I'm sorry your father's in the hospital, John. Yeah, so um, I think I just forgot everything I wanted to ask you. That's oh, right. well, actually, I did kind of have a question. Um, I wanted to ask you um, what you thought about um, the new pornographer's tribute to the Fleetwood Mac. Um, well, their tribute. That's, you know. I don't know what their tribute is. I haven't heard this. Oh, you, you can hear it on NPR Music. No, I don't listen to that. I really enjoyed it. But, NPR um, Music? I, I just to ask you. I, got, I can't listen to that stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, why? So anyway, but they, we just wanted where, who to say else thank they, you so who, much, and oh, you're, you're we've been preparing a package for you, and AP Mike, and Gary oh. the Squirrel. And okay. 
Um, Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks so much. I, I really appreciate the call. I hope your friend's father's better. Thank you. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? Hey, this is Adam from the Chateau. From the Chateau. Yeah, the Chateau. What the Chateau? What what is the Chateau? Well, it's my house in Brooklyn. I'm headed there right mm-hmm. now. Oh, of course. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I apologize listen, I wanted for... to see if you heard about this okay. thing because I heard somebody talking about Viral this thrill, the other day. Saying. Yeah, go ahead. What's that? This conspiracy theory about how Jim Morrison actually did fake his death and. It's like the whammy. He just shows up. All of a sudden, Paul Rogers. You know the best part of it is the callers can't hear it. That's the best part. I don't have I have it set up so we all hear it. You just get some glue. Just put it. It's like, you know, hey, you know, where, you know who might be able to take care of it? The 80, uh, the 80 car repair people in that giant garage over there rather than me. Well, the way they tried to justify it to me was that they said it was made by a different manufacturer or something. Oh, this guy didn't even say anything like that. He was basically saying, yeah, you should do this yourself. Yeah. Well, they were just grasping at straws. It's, it's completely bogus. Yeah. I agree. Well, thanks for the call, buddy. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Hi, who's this? This is Erica from Baltimore. What's up, Erica? Not much. I was just calling to... Uh, congratulate you on achieving a wonderful Garrison Keillor impression. We've listened to it progress, and it's excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. I only have two minutes left in the show, though. i got to go. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. Bye. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. It's Michael from L.A. Michael from L.A. What part of L.A.? Uh, Hollywood. The Hollywood Dell. What can I do for you, Michael? I wanted to call and let you know that it's Garrison Keillor's 70th birthday today. What's that? It's Garrison Keillor's 70th birthday. Behind a gun, I make my final stand. Listen to that voice. Right? Pretty dumb nickname, though. That's why they call me Bad Company. Did you overhear that? Like, I wouldn't want to know people were talking, calling me Bad Company, no matter how tough I was. Well, 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 how about that? Basically, I was just a different department, you know. But you know what I wanted to talk about? Have you been keeping up on the LIBOR thing? Because there's a lot of comedy in that. And in a way, it's such a scandalous thing that it's probably better, you know, that the jester uh, comes in and describes LIBOR. Because basically, you could convince the world that they all have to die because they're too broke to live. And, but that's basically what they did. Mm-hmm. Some economists looked at the entire planet and determined that it was worth only, I think it was $24 trillion. Mm-hmm. Well, the subprime scammers had it up to $71 trillion, three times the value of the entire planet. Now these other guys, uh-huh. the LIBOR guys, yeah, yeah. They've, they've got like budgets projected out 30 years that are worth like hundreds of trillions Mm -hmm. and the idea that they can they could convince future generations to believe the crap that they're broke solely because these guys overvalued the entire planet you know multiple times yeah no look you know what it's not as much of a uh an issues oriented show well that's i it's what i'm talking about is gestures if you got like listeners who are comedians, right? Mm-hmm. This is a heavy story that's got to be broken right. to the planet. You know, kind of a it's why they call uh-huh. me bad company. That I can deny. Bad company. I wasn't listening. Look, the LIBOR thing's upsetting. I know that. Right, Mike? 
Yeah. Right now, Mike's got this. Your opinion of, like, these kind of, you know, statesmen with big reputations now choosing um, in their, you know, in as they're older and could be making huge money playing festivals to instead be playing these little shows just the way they want. Because um, I think it's awesome. Hmm. Um, just Look, wondering what, what, what you think. Or I, I'm not exactly sure what arena Calvin Johnson would be packing well, if he had chosen to. But, but like a beat happening reunion could be like... Well, that's a whole other thing. They're not club. doing that. They're not doing that. Yeah. But, like, he, he doesn't play with amplification. Like, he doesn't play with the mic. Okay. And I think that's awesome. Good for him. Look, this guy earned his keep. I'm not going to judge and, Calvin Johnson at this point. It was, one of, it was one of the most entertaining shows I've seen. Okay. And, like, if you were behind, like, the fifth row, you probably wouldn't have heard too much. Look, you know, I, look is that it, awesome? Yes, it is awesome. All what right. Do you think, what did you think I was going to say? It stinks? <laughs> okay. I mean, well, well, some people I was talking about the concept with were saying, oh, that's stupid. You should be playing so that everybody can hear them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although they were typing. Okay. Well. The inflection was. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think the fade down is now my favorite part of it. That it fades in and it vanishes. It fades out with the same. And was walking around the mall for hours. Um, And eventually got trapped at Sears, which is kind of saying something. Did the bear, what if the bear hid in a -a (laughs) Build-A-Bear? Right? (laughs) Like it disguised uh, it itself be... as like the, if the bear put on like a like a little like ballerina outfit, put on like a like a sports uniform or something like okay. that. I said, yeah, in. or a ballerina outfit, like I said. Oh, wait, wait, what am I in a writer's room now? I'm writing with this guy? You guys trying to top me? Unbelievable, right, Mike? Yeah. Mike left already. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. How are you? Doing all right. Uh, this is Nick from the Bronx, first time caller. What's up, Nick? Well, uh, you were talking about the gift just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Velvet Underground song. Mm-hmm. You seen that video on YouTube? It's um, John Cale was on a game show in the fifties. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, this is crazy, crazy video. It's it's strange with those game shows. They it's a weird, not even really a contest. Panels just goofing around. TV was weird back in the fifties. Things were weird back in the fifties. Racism, polio, John Cale on game shows. Weird times. But you know when things weren't so weird in the early seventies, when a guy named Paul Rogers did this. I gotta get bad company up here, right? At least Paul Rogers, the voice. What's your favorite bad? But uh, I accidentally stumbled into it, and um, they were crazy. And uh, the, I'm watching the Democratic National Convention right now, and they, these people are just as crazy as the Tea Party people. Uh, I think John Hodgman is crazy, also. For, okay. Uh, for being crazy. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. It just uh, like uh, why is why is weed illegal? Like, right? You know, you should you should like lead a revolution, a Twitter revolution, and uh, get the weed uh, illegal and uh, no more uh, no more uh, war. Right? Mm-hmm. So, I should, you want me to lead a Twitter revolution to get weed legal? Well, no, anarchy revolution, really. But, uh, you, you know, we just march and, like, arrest uh, Chris Christie mm-hmm. or something. Like, the, as the people. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the the like original Tea Party, you know. Direct sure. Action. Yeah. Well, why not? Where? What are you? What role are you going to play in it? I mean, I, I'm I'm there with you. It's, you know, I I'll, I'll I have a much smaller influence, but uh, I, I'm a smart, logical person. I could, sure. I could, uh, no, I know. I'm ready to help in any way. I'm not voting. I don't think that's gonna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Man, we'll well, what else? Uh huh. It's why they call me Bad Company. Is that the funniest thing that's happened on the show, Mike, in a long time? Right. The show's unrecognizable from a year ago. I would never recognize this show now at all. Evolving or maybe devolving. I don't know. Get yeah, creative, Zach. Uh, no, no authority, no hierarchy, no patriarchy. Uh, I got one. Wait. Anarchy. No roads or schools. Well, I mean, but you, you look at the money that they're spending on uh, war and, uh, and, like, the education that the kids are getting, and it's kind of indoctrination to just obey it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like they're 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 getting the fair end of the stick. It's kind of like fascism with a merging of corporations with the uh, with the state, like you know, subsidizing oil, subsidizing the pharmaceutical industry. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And with anarchy, you know, you could you could grow weed in your uh, your lawn, and then you've got a you've got a really good grow uh, what? What did he say? You could grow weed in your lawn. Well, you wouldn't I mean, call a it a lawn anymore. It's a way to not be alcoholic. And it's a way to deal with your anxiety. It's got tons and tons of uses. Hemp also. Destiny. Take five grits of plastic. So, uh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can't okay. listen to people talk about hemp. But you can't, you can't really protest against these corporations because the state protects the rich people. Whatever you do, it, you get arrested. And you have to have direct Behind a gun I make my final stand It's why they call me Bad company But I can deny Man, I've never had somebody I agree with more about <laughs> things that I Like he's working against his own message you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I agree all, with most of what he was saying as well and still don't want to. I'm all for bringing it to the street. Form a journey, a Don't Stop Believing, I believe other journey songs at karaoke uh, nights around uh, Raleigh and actually I think around uh, certain spots in North Carolina. And the reason I'm bringing this up was because um, Do you want to ruin the I've show? always wanted them to um, perform again together. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if this is, you know, because um, I believe two of them uh, got married out of state. And um, I actually, I think not too long ago, I wrote a piece on my uh, my Facebook page saying that the crotchless panties should at least do, like, a reunion show at, um, you know, at, a, at one of their favorite karaoke spots. And maybe they could do, uh, you know, not just Don't Stop Believing, but you know, any way you want it. And uh, even even some of Steve Perry's solo work. Uh huh. Okay. And and I'm just trying to see maybe if I try it up on a Destiny. Uh, uh, on WFMU. Uh, uh, yeah. To do, uh, to do another uh, gig together as the Crackless Annie. Sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Behind a gun, I make my final stand. It's why they call me Bad Company. I can deny. <laughs> Still, that might be the best thing that's ever happened. In the history of the show, because it it 
I cannot think of anything that makes less sense in a way. It's like it's scary because they have all the guns and the nuclear missiles. So um, it's just like you know you, you want to do it right. in a peaceful way. You know, Gandhi, John Lennon kind of mm-hmm. kind of thing. And with the internet, we could we could actually mobilize people and stop depending on uh, corporate media to like. Look, you get the ball rolling, dude. Get the ball rolling. It's it's rolling. It's in it's in your court now. You got to. No, it's not. It's not rolling yet. It's not rolling. No, there there's there's movements. There's a, there's a spark. You know, the Occupy Wall Street. They they got they got a lot of people paying attention. To Good. You. Keep you keep it going. You get the ball rolling more. Look, you, you know what this you show know, is, right? You pass it to someone, and you know hey. that's that's all we can do. You know. Do you we, know the kind of show I do here? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do, you do, you do the best show. It's, it's good. And this isn't democracy now. Well, I just nobody like the viewership for democracy now is real, real low, and it's a, it's a great show, and she's really trying, and she's doing all she can. So, I mean, all right. Just, well, like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to have fun here. It's a fun we can, show. We can have, you know, lots of fun in the future. Oh, this is a fun call. You're right. Yeah, right. We can have fun. This is such a blast, and you uh, party down here. Uh, but yeah. you know, I, it's just I, you know, I don't want to go to prison indefinitely. That's like something that's that's really scary. Which candidate so, will send you to prison indefinitely? Because they what? have my vote. The the uh, there, did you hear about the anarchist who got jailed in uh, Washington? If I vote for Mitt Romney, will he jail you indefinitely? Well, they, I mean, that that bill is passed. They're Mitt twenty one twelve. Guantanamo Bay. I mean, twenty one. I get where the kid's coming from. Be like if I called uh, democracy now, and I, I wanted to know, uh, I, wa- I wanted to know when when we were going to talk about uh, karaoke songs. One didn't do so good as a soundtrack. It only made it to uh, 104 on the Billboard 200. Yeah. The House Party two, the House Party two soundtrack did pretty good. It made it to 55 on the Billboard 200, and there was a funny skit. There was a funny moment from arrest or from House Point Two on there. There's these buffoons who were trying to rap in the movie, trying to rap like the BC Boys, and that's on there on the House Party Two soundtrack. So I don't know if you've never heard that, you might want to check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh huh. But anyway, that's what I have. I don't know. Have okay. you ever, ever? Did you ever see that? Did ever see what? House Party Two. House Party Two. No, that is what Kid and Play. Yeah, I mean, the movie's kind of whatever, but the soundtracks to those movies mm-hmm. are a pretty interesting, like, time capsule of the New Jack Swing thing. Well, what happened. years are we talking about? 1990, 1991. They were back-to-back like that? They were back-to-back like that, yeah. It's crazy. Wow. They really cranked out uh, those house party movies. They did. Uh, I don't know what was going on. The House Party One was on Motown as a soundtrack. Sure. House Party two, House Party Two was on MCA. MCA so yeah. I don't know what happened there. It might have been a shift with Motown at that point. I think that's what happened. I don't know. Is that? I know that Motown. I, I think that was before the Big Boys to Men album kind of put Motown sort of back on the map. That's why they call me. Is that the first back to back? That is the first back to back. Well, the, can they do it? Best show, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, it's John from Maplewood. It's not going to happen, Mike. Unless this is John from Maplewood's worst call yet. Well, I'm afraid. Nay. Showing to Don. Okay. Anyway, you were talking about Ice Cube, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I want to know, is he, like, your favorite rapper or no? Ice Cube? Yeah. Sure. Why not? Or do you not listen to rap? I listen to hip-hop. Uh, also, you were talking about that movie with him in it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you mind if I recommend you a movie? What do you What do you want to recommend? Let me hear it. It's called, it, you know you know who Cameron is from Harlem? Sure. Rapper? Of course uh, I do. Well, have you ever heard of the movie Kill a Season? K I L L A, K I L L A, Killer Season. Yeah. No. I recommend you watch it. It is honestly one of the somewhere between extremely funny and extremely great. So Cameron's an actor. 
Well, yeah, I think for like two movies, though. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the movie about? Oh, it's about him and his like niece getting... It's about his niece getting killed and him getting revenge or something mm-hmm. like that. Okay. It's really funny. It's really funny? That's what I... That's how I perceived it. Okay. What else? Who else is in the movie? In that one? Uh, yeah. Well, Santana, Jim Jones, Dane Dash. Can't remember that. A bunch uh-huh. of rappers. Make my final stand. It's why they call me. Bad company. And I can deny. It's been a while, guys. That's when you know the best show's coming back. Best show. Uh, hi, Tom. It's Dan from Australia. How are you? Doing all right. How are you, Dan? Yeah, pretty well. Uh, sorry for all your losses up there. The trailer I've seen in years. That's okay. all I'm going to say. Like, maybe best. the movie isn't as good as the trailer, but that best. trailer... Okay. I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm 100%. Look, this is what I hope. This is what I hope for you. First of all, you never told me your name. What's your name? J.B. J.B. from L.A. J.B. from L.A. Yep. Well, look, J.B., I hope it's the greatest movie you ever saw. I hope you have the greatest time ever. You go see it ten times. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm just, yeah, I mean, respect. I, I'm just saying, man, you know, whether whether it's the movie you were picturing in your head, mm-hmm. it's like a, it's a different beast. Mm-hmm. It's a different animal. Okay. You know? That's fair. I don't know. Just, you know, trying to stay positive. Because I remember watching that, actually. I was in the, the first time I saw that trailer, I was, mm-hmm. on my, I was on my smartphone. I was in the lobby trying to do a medical study, right? Well, tell, get, yeah, give me let, this give, story. Let me give you some background, okay? All right, please. Okay, I was in the lobby of a medical study place in Glendale, California. Okay. Listen, I'm broke. I'm a broke musician. I'm trying to, I'm trying to grip this 7G medical study. Inpatient, right? Inpatient. Are you in a band? I'm there for 30 days. What band are you in? I do a draft thing called Juice Box. Oh, Juice Box. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm in, I'm in this, you know, I'm broke. I spent all my money on energy drinks this year. I made these energy drinks. Nobody cares. Um, I lost a lot of money trying to make my own energy drinks. Whatever. That's in the past. Let's, let's, let's go to the present right now. So I'm in this lobby, right? I'm like, am I... <laughs> isn't that isn't that maybe the best thing that ever happened on this show Mike it's got to be up there Franco James Franco you're on the air hey well Tom yeah here's the thing is I was me and my friends we took a, we took a long driving trip <clears throat> Up to up to New York the other day, and we drove through Alabama and we drove through Birmingham, right? And we're like it's very late at night, and we're all like, you know, had a number of Red Bulls and things like that, so nobody knows what to think. And then we all hear we're listening to commercial rap radio stations, right? And then there's this there's this commercial uh-huh. that comes on about an ass convention, Tom. About a what convention? Ass. Really? And, uh, and like keep it clean, though. You, you got to keep this clean. Like, keep it clean for the radio, buddy. If you're going to tell this story, got to keep sure, it clean. That's, that's the only profane word I'm okay. going to say. But I'm just saying, like, and then we were all pretty, like, we were all pretty interested. Like, I was willing to spend the next day mm-hmm. confirming him that this is a thing that we could all go to, take a break from driving. Go to and then, like, I'm Googling it all night. While we're at our hotel room all night Googling this place. Commercial radio, everything. No, nothing. Uh huh. Never, that never gets tired, isn't that? That's the problem with this life is that that's my, that's me inventing. That's my Google. 
completely un can't but couldn't make it t turn that into a twenty cents that idea. And the ladies will love it, sure. True. Well, thank you, Sarah. All right. It was nice to talk to you. Good luck. Thank you. Well, good luck. It's not real. Well, yeah, but good luck doing it anyway. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Best show, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. It's John from Asheville. John from Asheville. What's up, John? I I don't. I just wanted to put in a plug for I I know how, how great the bad company hang-up is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how difficult it is to do um, <laughs> to get that to get that reverb, the ballpark uh, <laughs> sound that you did with Spike, but I just have to put in a good word for for that as a, as another brilliant hang up. Uh huh. And what is it message. that you you don't like the Bad Company hang up? No, I, I love them both. I uh -huh. just I you know I just wanted to you know lest lest we forget that there's. And and you had the uh, slide whistle hang up. You're That's just kind of proliferating. That's true. <laughs> A variety of, of it's like kind of like sauces at McDonald's for your chicken McNuggets. Exactly. So, it's got barbecue, honey mustard. There's some other weird. What's the other weird sauce they had there? Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. What's your favorite sauce? I like the sweet and sour when I was uh -huh. a kid. That was. What do you like about it? Kind of weird. What did you like about it? Uh, I, I think there's tumor in it. It's why they call me. Bad company. Guy wanted it. Guy shouldn't have mentioned it. Comes and gets you. We still didn't figure out the Vincent Chase story. He is going to be. Oh, here it goes. We only have one minute left in the show. He's going to be in Avatar 2, right? Because he did Aquaman. And maybe they're San Francisco. What's up, Michael? Not much. I have an idea um, for you, sir. All right. Um, do you know how one of my favorite things you do is when you play Bad Company to drown people out? I just, God damn, I, I, I love that. But I think that I think that you should change it up. I think it's time for a new one. How about How Long by 8? No. What do you mean? Listen to the lyrics real fast. Here's the first verse. Well, the friends with their fancy persuasion don't admit that it's part of the scheme, but I can't help but have my suspicions because I ain't quite as dumb as I think. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. But can you say that again? Yeah, let me let me do it again. Hold on. Can you sing it? I forget how that yeah. melody, that co that opening verse goes. Well, it's perfect because it takes 30 seconds to come in. And okay. In the beginning, it's just like... Boom. And then it comes in. Come on. Destiny. And he said that again. Mm -hmm. uh, you want me to say it? Or sure. Or sing it. Sing it, okay. Well, let's stand. Oh, sorry. Well, I was born. Six feet. I was born. Six feet. I was born. But I can't help but have my own. I make my final stand. It's why they call me Bad oh, Company. That's like T-ball, man. It's like T-ball. Kid just lays it on the stand. Swing away. Swing. Maybe the, maybe the dumbest, easiest. part of the show and that made the other caller to indulge in what red neckery a red necker okay well look i don't know if exactly if somebody in denver has the right to, to you know i mean that's a pretty you guys are pretty uh out in the sticks there yourself you know what i mean whoa not, whoa whoa oh, you really are drunk i can hear that and i heard it in your voice on that one <laughs> Sorry, sorry. sorry. You almost oh, fell I'll, off your I'll, I'll chair. What's that? I'll tone it down. I mean, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to rile this, this show up too fast. Mm -hmm. We got to ease into it. Yeah, we do. So, what what are some of the songs that you uh, that you would like rem that you would not remove from an album? Okay, so let's say you're listening to a, a Yola Tango album, all right? 
Yeah. My girlfriend does not like the instrumental songs. Okay. Right? I'm a fan. I think they're great driving songs. Mm-hmm. So I, I would not remove those, whereas she would. Okay. Fish. Listening to a Fish album. I would, uh, I would probably delete Bouncing Around the Room and go for the instrumental songs. Mm-hmm. Okay. But she she would delete them. You she would. would. She would quickly delete them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm just wondering, you know, like LP. It's why they call me. Sorry, guy. It happens. I don't know what to tell you. That guy. That guy was asking for that, right? One more call, then we'll bring John on. Best show, you're on the air. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hi, it's uh, Matt calling from uh, Helen. And uh, I'm excited to call in. I'm really thrilled to hear a uh, someone get bad company while I was on hold there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something else, right? What's that? What? It's something else. You hear? You 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 heard that on hold? I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, I that's what it. it's like. We don't do that unless the calls are, you know. I don't do that that often, but the calls have to be a certain kind of, a certain level of of of, you know. Yeah. 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 Indulgence. Yeah. Um, I had a, a, a couple things. I don't know if you're sick of uh, Frankie Teardrop stories. Um, I have a slightly embarrassing one. Um, I also had a thing for an older topic, best of the best, worst of the worst. So uh, whatever way you, what, what would you like to hear? Well, why don't you, uh, you tell me. Destiny. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I guess I'll tell you this uh, Frankie Teardrop challenge i took it about three weeks ago i did i didn't manage to call in Mm -hmm. uh i don't know if it's possible to top uh that guy who went on the stand by me train bridge but um we i live near a uh, uh, a lake and there's a small island on it and i was thinking well you know how can i top the guy who at that point had gone into <laughs> That's the first back to back one, I think. Right, Mike? I don't think we've ever had back to back. I gotta see if it's the third one. I gotta just see. Best show, you're on the air. <laughs> That's the first back to back one, I think. Right, Mike? I don't think we've ever had back to back. I gotta see if it's the third one. I gotta just see. Best show, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Who's this? Uh, my name is Russell. I'm calling from Brooklyn. What's your name? Russell. From Russell. Brooklyn. Okay, what's going on tonight, Russell? Uh, well, I had uh, a, a, a sister idea uh, to the uh, the Frankie Teardrop Challenge. Okay. Uh, and it's the Pig Pen Challenge. I was wondering if you would want to hear about it. Sure. So, whereas Frankie Teardrop is all about going alone and wandering through the darkness the pig pen challenge is you sit in a room with a very good friend of yours and you get the full 25 minute version of good lovin Mm -hmm. and you have to sit and listen to the whole thing looking at your friend and making unwavering eye contact and neither of you can say anything to the whole thing Mm -hmm. okay and I think that would be a terrifying and very, very difficult thing to do. I don't know if I would be able to do it myself, but I think I would be very tempted to do it. I would be laughing my head off. It's why they call me. How about that, Mike? Well, maybe that one might have been stretching a little. What? The trifecta. It's a hat trick. So squids on the ice. That one. All right. 
enough of those shenanigans. I want to bring to the air a guy. For 9 o'clock tonight for Amish Mafia, which premiered. For Amish evening. Mafia. No, I Can didn't. Can you imagine a thing like that? I didn't set my DVR for it, sorry. What channel's it on? I believe it's on A&E. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if it's a reality show or if it's just a joke. But these guys seem like they mean business. Is this a marketing campaign? No, no, no. It's not a marketing campaign. It's just a ridiculous idea for a television mm -hmm. show. And it seems like they're serious about it. In the preview, you see this guy walking away from, like, a carriage... Uh -huh. And it just explodes. The carriage explodes. Yeah. I thought, you know, they live simple lives and they don't do things like explosions and mm -hmm. television, but they're going against it all, it sounds like. Like, what else goes on in the trailer? It seems like there's there's territory struggles that mm -hmm. go on okay. on the farm. And they just, I don't know, it, it, it seems like it's real, but I don't know if it is. It's, it's like a mafia show, but I didn't know Amish people practice mafia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here. I don't know why these shows get on television. It doesn't make sense. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I mean, what do they do? They pitch for these shows? It's why they call me... Amish Mafia. Amish. It lost me when you saying Amish. Best show, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? Hey, it's Flick from Chicago. Flick from Chicago. What's up tonight, Flick? One of the new promos for Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. What are you thinking? They look stupid. They look dumb. It's riding motorcycles and walls are blowing up. <laughs> but that's why we love the show, right? It is why we love the show. Well, that's actually not why I love the show. I love the show because of the because of because of the show. Well, that, yeah, there's that too. I'm I'm thinking though, isn't it time that we have one of those post mortem analysis shows of some of the anarchy? Uh huh. Hmm. Very interesting. What would that be like? Um, I don't know. Something in the vein of Talking Dead. Mm hmm. But. With BFX, uh, they have never done a post-show talking thing. I don't know what. Uh, it'll be interesting to see their take on it. I got a host for it. Who? Chuck Zito. Chuck Zito. Ooh. Look, tell me what the episode would be like. You just spread out and tell me what what the the first episode of Talking Anarchy would be. Uh, all right. Well, Chuck Zito is our host. And I'm thinking the first guest from the show should be Chucky. Mm -hmm. he's, he's great, and you don't get to see enough of Chucky. I don't know, has he ever been in any other show? It's why they call me. Guys, I'm telling you, you step it up. It's one snooze. It has been a snooze a thon tonight, these calls. I'm telling you, step it up. Best show, you're on the air. There's like some wimpy little scrawny British guy just like, ew, give me your crumpets or else the horse will crush you, blah, blah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I just I yeah, thought that uh, right. I'd call in and see what's up. So how's well, your day going, man? How's my day going? Well, it's kind of going down. I See, I've been having a lot of bad calls on the show tonight. Yeah, sorry. I, I know mine probably isn't that great. But what? No, yours you is know. great. You're the first good one. Really? Yeah. Thank you. You're the first one but, to uh, turn it around. Yeah, so what, what, how, did, how did this whole radio thing start with you? That's a good question. How did this whole radio thing start with me? Well, you know, the show started back in the, in 2000. Oh. Yeah. 
Like, how'd they pick you up? Is there, like, a tryout or... Well, they do different schedules and you see how it ends up, you know? You just try different things and who knows where the, you know... I mean, like, you, like, seek them out, they... Uh, they seek you out. Well, that's what? a great. That's a great question. I uh, gave him a tape. Oh. Mm-hmm. So like. What are your impressions of the show? Tell me, please. Uh, it's very laid back. Very laid back. Although I, I never hear about the station from anyone. Like it's uh not like oh I say hey, you heard ninety point one. That's why they call me. I mean, every caller tonight has been off off their game. Everyone. What's that, Mike? Line one. Here we go. Best show you're on the air. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Who's this? Jimmy. You talk a little. Tom talks a lot. You talk a okay. little. That's one fine. for you. One, two, three for me. That's how it goes. Sounds good. The Am I good to speak? Mm. You will. You will. Corey, cool, cool your jets, Corey. We're going to have a nice conversation. It's going to be, you tell your whole family about it. You, you talk to Tom. I struck out the past few times I've called, so I don't want to strike you out this time. You struck, what happened the last couple times? Yeah, I got a uh, bad company last time <laughs> because I mispronounced Amish Mafia. I said Amish. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't want that to happen again this time. Yeah, I, I know what I you think- mean. So what happened? You called, you were talking about the show Amish Mafia? Yeah, yeah, but, um, and I said Amish instead of Amish, and it was rather embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And, um, I just don't want that to happen, but I think I have something good here. I think right. this is something that well, might, uh, strike your fancy. Let's hear it, let's hear it. Um, I read an article, and I tweeted it at you not that long ago, and, um, it's about a group of, I, I can't say anything other than losers, who decided to have a fantasy football draft Game of Thrones and it is one of the saddest things I think I've ever read in my entire life it made you sad it, people literally dressed up like the characters now listen I like Game of Thrones oh I'm sorry it's why they call me Happens to everybody. Not everybody. Seems to happen to that guy. Look, it's your thing. It's your thing, Corey. Best show, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Hi, who's this? This is David calling from Boston. Dave. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking at their stupid eyebrows that Mm -hmm. look like they're from another planet. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one? Mm Mm-hmm. No, no, I think I think it's a huge issue. I think you're just... Is it really? <laughs> yeah, I think you're just riding the crest of that wave. Okay. Uh. You know. It happens that, like that sometimes. You know? Sometimes you, somebody notices something that, that other people don't notice. And you may be the first one to notice this. Well, I was the first one a long time ago, but mm. I'm just telling you now because okay. I haven't been calling lately. Sure. Because I've had these issues. I told you, I had this breakup, this like long distance breakup, and it's been. I went to the doctor. He, I said, "What's the matter with me?" He said, "You have a broken heart." It's true, I do. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm-hmm. You got a broken heart. I do. Mm-hmm. All right. Everybody does once in a while, right? It happens. But, it happens, yeah. man. <sighs> what else is going on? It's really hard. I don't know what else is. I miss you so much. I haven't okay. called in a while. Mm. And I had some other issues, but, you know, I thought I would just let you um, uh, ride uh, and do something. But yeah, I well, guess I don't have anything, that's, really. That's kind of what I say. do, Michael. I kind of That's kind of why I host the show. That's right. And yeah. you don't. <laughs> I know. Look, I, I hope you're okay. I'm sorry about your broken heart. And uh, you hang in there. Mm-hmm. But what about Laura Preponso?
Uh, so we're hanging out, and you know everything starts up in a good vibe, and I'm thinking, oh, this is really cool, you know, expanding mm-hmm. my mind. And mm-hmm. and then he put on um, Olivia Tremor Control after that, uh, Dusk at Cubist Castle, and we're listening to the the Green Typewriter sequence, and it's getting you know kind of atmospheric, you know, and 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 that, and and everything's kind of on a good even keel. And then he uh, he stands up and he says, oh, hold hold on a second. He's like, oh, now we should listen to that Frankie Teardrop song. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm thinking, okay. And, and let me also say, I, I forgot to add a point that when I first came over to his house, I went mm-hmm. to use the bathroom. Sure. And he immediately apologized uh, for the fact that he had had to trim his hair earlier that day, uh-huh. uh, which did not look like it had been trimmed. And his entire sink was filled with hair. Okay. Well, uh, what did his hair look like before that? Uh, it looked exactly the same. It looked, it was, I mean, it was a little shaggy. So, I mean, maybe he trimmed a little bit here or there, but it, the sink was absolutely covered in hair, uh-huh. uh, which was a little unsettling. Sure, and, sure. Uh, so, you know, at this point, I'm kind of like, this guy's kind of cool. I'm just getting to know him okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. And, and he puts this song on, and, I mean, immediately, it changed the vibe. And I... I sitting there kind of listening to it and it's just that, that thumping, you know, that like relentless beat and um, you know, the subject matter is getting more and more darker and darker and I'm sitting here listening to it and I'm starting to get freaked out and I look over at him and he's just got his eyes closed and he's just bobbing his head. It's why they call me. Oh, you like that, Mike? Mike loves that. That's Mike's favorite part of the show. That and laughing. A few weeks ago, somebody was nice enough to say, Tom, would you like anything from Starbucks before the show? And then Mike says, The song is really getting to me. Yeah. So I turn around and I immediately start sprinting in the other direction. Yeah. Uh, like and a, like a, I trip over one of those small headstones. Uh-huh, like and a, like I, a big fat I, my chicken. I the ground and then my torso falls forward. And I crack the bridge of my nose on another headstone. Mm. And oh, my goodness. So I'm bleeding profusely, but I'm also, like, in the middle of a panic attack. Mm-hmm. So I run back to the edge of the cemetery. I get out of there. And uh, I think, well, you know, I drove three hours. I don't really want to abandon this. So I go back to my car. I plug my nose up with a bunch of napkins. And... Uh, I found a trail that was sort of overgrown that leads mm-hmm. where I eventually led me there. Okay. And when I got there, it's about it's about like a two mile stretch of just abandoned freeway that slopes downward, and so it's just this terrifying abyss. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I walked down it for about half a mile. Okay. And I should mention when I fell down, uh, my right headphone wire shorted or something, so okay. I can only hear it on my left ear. Which sure, sure. Is even worse. And uh, I hear this screaming like I think somebody is dying mm-hmm. and uh, I freeze and I turn my flashlight over to the side there are these valleys that slow down to the side and after about a minute I stop I'm, just, I'm like paralyzed with fear and I see this gigantic black dog come out of the place. sorry dude Somebody had to get that tonight. You were not entirely deserving of it, but you were kind of deserving of it. Yeah, well, trust me, Mike, that's not the last Frankie Teardrop story. There's 19 more of them coming. Everybody, for some reason, that's, that's uh, that's my American pie, man.